everyone, this is Cat Coloring with another video. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. Today I'm going to be finishing this uh, rather big beginner tutorial coral reef from Berettelser from Atlantis, Tales from Atlantis by Hannah Carlson. On January 23rd, the English edition of Tales from Atlantis will be released in the United States. So I thought it would be uh, cool to show the, this beginner video from this book uh, with this coral reef. And in the other videos, I have shown you how to color the background, the water plants, and the different sorts of corals and sea anemones. They are not called sea anemones, but anemones in English. Uh, and all of these uh, beautiful corals and giant clams. So today we're going to finish this picture by coloring the seabed here. Uh, mostly sand, I think, and some uh, little stones. So I think we will have to color them in some very neutral colors. I haven't decided yet. We're also going to be coloring these big vases and these two smaller ones. We have so many fish, fishes we want to color. Um, big ones and small ones. We have the starfish here. On the vases and the seabed, we have a little crack down here, and we also have these tentacles here. So I think that behind these corals and this uh, clam, we have a little squid. So we also have to color that. And then, of course, we have all the bubbles. So we have work cut out for us today, I must say, and also jewelry. So I will begin with the vases, the big vases. Normally, Antique vases are, uh, or a lot of them from, for example, ancient Greek, they were uh, f this from this uh, red clay, so they have this uh, reddish color or yellow clay that they also used, and then they painted them black with a lot of uh, patterns and uh, also a lot of motifs of the gods and heroes and stuff and so. On. But you can see here that we only have some small patterns. Uh, at the top of the vases and otherwise we can't see anything. So I think I will color them in a more neutral and a lighter color. Um, so I have looked at some pictures as I normally do, just have to find them. You can see here, this is a picture of a collection of vases. They are of course <laughs> modern, but uh, made to look like ancient vases. And you can see here this um, sort of terracotta brownish color, but somewhat lighter. Uh, a lot of the vases uh, have this color. There are also some more, you can see here, one is more gray and some are more beige or light brown in the color. But I also found this one and I really like this one in the colors. Uh, it's a bit dark beige down here and then it turns brighter. And at the very top, you can see it's some sort of an orange color. Uh, too light to be terracotta, I think, uh, or a very, very light terracotta color. Anyway, so I have decided to use the following colors for the vases. Uh, the eggshell PC140 and the beige PC997 for a somewhat darker color at the bottom. A more dark beige, it's called beige Sienna PC1080. And, um, whoops, I think I missed a pencil here. Ah, it was hiding behind the paper. Uh, for the top of the vases, the Burnt Ochre PC943 and the Mineral Orange PC1033. And then I will dare to use another color is the um, Peach Beige and uh, it's PC 1085 and this pencil you can see is not very big and it's not because I have used it. I think I've used this pencil three or four times and you can see why. This is the only pencil of the Prismacolor 150 set that has really given me some trouble because um, every time I sharpen this, this and every time I use it, it keeps just cracking. There's simply something wrong with the lead, and I don't know why. It's the only pencil in this set that does it. And you can see here, I haven't used this color so much. 
I have sharpened and sharpened and sharpened because it keeps cracking and cracking and cracking. So I will try to use it here at the bottom with the base Yenner, but I'm not sure that it will work out because I think that it will just give me trouble again. So I might skip it if it just keeps breaking. So let's start with this one over here. So I will start here and I will start with the eggshell. And I have sharpened the pencil and you can see there are some things like this starfish and other. I think they are some sort of tiny microorganisms uh, that are attached to this vase. Uh, it has been for the seabed we must imagine for a long time. So I just want this. This is the lightest color. I've consulted my color family chart here from Color with Claire. And you can see here the eggshell, the lightest color, then the beige. Then we have the peach beige and uh, seashell pink, which I have not chosen for this one. The putty beige I have also not chosen. And then the beige sienna. So we have this color family here where I want to go from the light to the darker colors. So I will use this one. And remember, we imagine the light coming down from above, which means that there will be more light down in the middle of this one. <clears throat> and then as we uh, go around this side of the vase, it will get darker. And this side also, also because we have a little fish here and here we have the water plants. So this part will be darker in the colors. And up here, I want to place these uh, reddish orange colors, which means that I will take the beige now. You can see there is not so much different, but there is a slight difference. In the colors here and now we are getting near here where there will be more shadow and dark colors so I will soon shift to another color And I will, oh my, I will try to use this peach beige and I will hope it won't just crack and crumble. And I will have to do this very lightly because it's not a good pencil. It must be some sort of a manufacturing uh, flaw with this one. I've never experienced it with any other pencil from any brand. Just this one, this particular pencil. So you can see that I, and this color is a bit darker. I just add it here. And then I want the beige sienna to be the darkest color here. So I want to put it here at the bottom of the vase. Oh, that was a snail. Um, also over here, I think. This must be in more shadow than the other part. So I will try to, oh, I keep thinking that this will break. I have just tried it so many times. I had actually given up using this pencil, but I want this color here. Hmm. And now I have to decide, do I want just this bit of the vase to be these uh, orange colors or also the tip here. Hmm. I don't know. I think that I will lay the burnt ochre here.
and the mineral orange here. And I think that I will make some sort of a transition. So I think that I will use the beige here because it's a bit darker than the eggshell to uh, mark this pattern here and also here. So I will also be using this peach beige. There must be more shadow over here. And the sienna beige here. So it's just this part of the vase that I want to give a, um, a more terracotta look. And I want to use the eggshell as a background for this pattern. So if I just lightly color, I think that um, this pattern is probably more clear. I will use the beige for this one. And we do remember that this is uh, underwater and I have tried to make things a bit lighter, but a lot of highlights, highlights we don't have uh, down in the ocean, only when artificial light hits it. So I don't want to make a lot of highlights here. I think this is how I want it to be colored. This means that I will just have to layer it all now. which means that I add another layer of this eggshell, the lightest color, trying not to color the bubbles. I mean, you can always color and add white Posca and all that, but I think that when the background uh, is too colored, I think that you have to add a lot of layers of Posca to cover it, especially if it's dark color. So I prefer not to color so much where I perhaps want some to add some white later. And I had also some eggshell here. And the beige here. and so on. Well, you can imagine. So I will let you watch the rest of this with music.
The vase is finished. Only the vase, not all the things uh, on top of it. But I used, I hope you saw it, sepia PC948 to add just a little bit of some, some shadows here and there. I will color this little vase now. And I think that um, this is further down in the picture and I would imagine that there is not that much light here. So I think I will color this a bit darker in the color. So I will take the beige sienna and add this color. from the bottom of the vase and upwards. And we remember the light comes down, so I think that I will here and then, and you saw what happened in the other video. It just, it cracked completely and it kept cracking even though I am um, Try to sharpen it. Well, I will now add gently, carefully, this troublesome peach beige. You can see we have to be careful not to um, have the same colors just. So I think that I will use the beige now. It's a lighter color up here. So it doesn't really mix with the colors from these corals. So, can, so it, you can see a difference. And I will just add a layer again. But there must still be some things uh, that are darker than others. Another little layer, just blending down to the beige sienna with this peach beige, the most difficult color I have ever had. And then just a touch of this beige color up here. And the sepia, just to add a little bit of a shadow down here. I actually think that I want to color this because this is really down. And you can see the seabed here, so it's not just on top of, but uh, down in the seabed. So I think that um, we have to have some sort of some shadowing here. And there you have it. That was the vases. I'll color the other two. Uh, afterwards, but you can see here how I want the vases to be. And um, now we have to uh, think about what to color next. So now I want to color a lot of little things. I want to color the starfish. And these are, I think they are what is called acorn barnacles. Some sort of an um, thing, animal or some sort uh, with a shell that sits on things and crabs eat them. I also want to color the crab and the snails. So um, I have some pictures here. I found this picture of a crab and it's called a um, porcelain anemone crab. And um hope you can see it here. And it's some sort of a very light blue color. Then there are some more bluish uh, almost stripes. And then they have some sort of dots of a darker blue. And um, I thought this would be a nice color because I don't have a lot of blue on this uh, drawing. So perhaps some blue down here, not too much. Then we have the starfish. And um, of course, this is a typical normal starfish, red and orange colors. But I think that I want some of the fishes to be orange, so I don't want to use this color combination. This is more magenta, uh, reddish-like, but you can see I've already colored 
some of the corals with magenta and process red. So um, it's no use using that color again for the starfish. They will look too much alike. So I found this picture. It's um, some sort of an invasive um, starfish down at, I think it was the Great Barrier Reef. I found this uh, article and this beautiful picture. It's purple with purple colors and um, some very nice uh, magenta-like colors, but I have found some other colors to do it. So it will be some dark purplish colors. Um, and I also, this is uh, an acorn barnacle and you can see it's some sort of a gray color, but also with a hint of some green here. So the color combinations will be as follows. The crab, I will start with the crab and I will color the crab cloud blue PC 1023. I will then use Cobalt Blue Hue PC133. And finally for the dots, Indian Throne Blue PC208. So, just take it up so you can see the crap. You can see the crap. So, um, this crap is light blue and I think that the cloud blue was the lightest of the blue colors in the Prismacolor set. These are from different color families. Uh, the cloud blue is usually in a family with the blue violet lake, imperial violet and dioxathene purple hue. And the cobalt blue hue here and uh, the, the throne blue are in the same color family. But I think that the lightest of the colors there uh, is light cerulean blue. And if you can see here, this color family, this light cerulean blue, it's actually quite dark compared to the cloud blue here. So I want it to be a very light color. So I will just color all of the crap with this to have some sort of a <laughs> I was almost tempted to see foundation color. So very lightly, just this cloud blue and you can hardly see it, but it's there. And I want to add now some of this cobalt blue hue. and a bit darker underneath. And then I think I will just, just add a little bit more cloud blue here so that you can see that there is a color down here. And then I will add these spots or dots of the Indian Throne Blue. Oh, well, we have to sharpen this one. Oh, it's back too. So now it's nice and sharpened and will not crack. And then just add these small dots of this darker blue color. and in no particular order, just adding them. Oh, 
perhaps some more dark blue here and well that's it and the acorn barnacles will be colored with the 20% warm gray PC 1051 the 30% warm gray PC 1052 and the jade green PC 1021 and we can see here that these acorn barnacles are sitting on this big vase So I will just start with the 20% and then at the 30% and just at some of the G green. So it doesn't really have to be fancy this one. This one I think I will color more jade green and just add 20% warm gray and this one I will just that will be warm gray 20% and the center 30% so you can just color them as you want All of these little dots, I think that they are baby acorn barnacles. So I will just also color them this color. So more jade green on this big one. And um, I think that's it. So now we are done with these. And then we have the starfish. And for the starfish, I want to use the Mulberry PC 995 and the Dahlia Purple PC 1009. And finally, the whoops the dark purple PC 931. So, I will just add this dark purple in the middle here of the starfish and here. And then I will add some Dahlia purple around it. And then the mulberry at the edges. So that's how you color the starfish and then finally the snails and I think a lot of snails are just boring because they are almost always brown so I think that I will use some other colors so I will use the beige sienna again PC 1080 
but I will also use the Rosy Beige PC1019. You can see I have hardly ever used this one. And I want to add a little light pink, Pink Rose PC1018. So that this snail, these nails here, will not be boring to look at. So I will use the base CNR here for the body. And then I will use the rosy beige at the edges of this little shell and then the pink rose for the rest of it. So the snails are you can still see that they are there. They don't just blend in with the background, but they are not so colorful or as colorful as the sea anemones or these pink corals. You can see here now that I have colored on the opposite page also the vases and the starfish and these uh, acorn barnacles on the vase. And I have colored all of the snails. So, now we are going to um, attempt trying to color the seabed. And, uh, well, it's mostly just uh, sand, uh, sometimes rocks and stones. So um, I don't want the seabed to be too dark. I want it to be uh, a bit light. But in another color scheme, color palette, than uh, the vases, and uh, these uh, corals with the, the holes. So I have decided to use the French gray pencils and some of the warm grays for the stones. So to color this sandy seabed, I have chosen the 10% French gray PC 1068 and the 30% French gray PC 1070. And the 50% French Grey PC 1072 to the darker parts, uh, of course, and to uh, lay some shadows only for shadowing uh, the 90% French Grey PC 1076. And we also have, you can see here, some small stones. And I don't want them to be French Grey. That would be a weird color, I think, because most stones are grey. So I've decided to use the 50% Warm Grey PC 1054 for some of the stones. And the rest will be colored with the 70% Warm Grey PC 1056. And that's to add a little bit of some darker colors to the seabed, but not so many. You can see the stones are very small. So these little dark dots will be uh, nice and then the rest will be somewhat brighter. So I will just, uh, and it's a bit difficult to color this because the, it's a double page. So I want to show you how to um, color here and perhaps a bit here. So I will start with the 10% French gray. And I want it to be light, so we still imagine that light comes from above, which means that this part of the seabed will be somewhat light. I know we have plants, but they could come from a bit away and then just be here. So I don't think that they shadow a lot here. So I just want to add a little bit of color here and then I take the 30% to add down here. And more down here because we remember that it gets a bit darker down here. And I think that this um, sea anemone uh, is shadowing a bit for the sand, so I think that this one should be just a little bit 
darker. And then we have the 50%. And I think that up here I will color with this 50% French gray. And I will certainly color with it down here where we are further away from the light. I think that it's actually going to be dark that bit. So if we just add a bit of the 30%, you can see it taking some more form here. And then you can see that the lightest of the colors here. I don't know if it was too light. I think it's okay that it's light here. So this should give you a hint. I still have to layer. But this should give you a hint about how it's going to look. And if we want to add some shadow, and I want to, um, I would just have to add a little bit here with this 90% French grey. These plants, I don't think that they add so much shadow, but these uh, small rocks will. And then to color some of these little rocks, I just choose some to color with the 70% warm grey. And some of them with the 50% warm grey. Then you can see here we have these a bit darker stones and then the C bit here. If we should color this one, this is in the shadow of the corals. I think that I would just immediately start using the 50% French grey, the darkest of the seabed colors here. And uh, add some warm grey here. And then add some shadow from these corals. So here we must have a bit of a shadow from the vase. So I think that it will be lighter here and here. And that was the 10% and then a little bit darker here. Until you come down here and then we will have to use the 50% French grey because it will be darker still here. So you can see that's how you just layer this and then you can again add a little bit of a shadow, perhaps a little bit down here. Fish. And that's how you do that. Now I have finished coloring the entire seabed here. And you can see that some places I have made it darker and that means that I have only used the uh, was it 50% and 90% of the French grey over here in this area and a little bit 
underneath some of it with the 30 percent uh, but most of it with the dark colors and you can see here i have used a lot of the 10 and 30 percent french gray and only here at the sides the darker colors also here a bit more light and then it just turns darker because a lot of these areas of the seabed uh, lie in shadow because of all of these corals and here i imagine that um, we have some more light coming down uh, also so it won't be too dark around the crab here so now we are have finally reached some of the re really exciting parts of this uh, coloring the fishes and also this little octopus or squid or whatever i can only see four tentacles but i think it's sort of an octopus so i have uh, again done a little research and i want to color these small fishes in two different color combinations you can see here on this picture that mm, a lot of these tiny fishes uh, that swim in big flocks that they are some sort of yellow orange here and on this picture we can see that they are more red orange a bit orange just a stripe and then the rest of them are red so i would like to uh, color the fish up here i would like to add a bit more color uh, so some of the fish i would like to color with these three colors the yellowed orange pc 1002 and the spanish orange pc 1003 and add some orange pc 918 and some of the other fishes i want to color with the orange pc 918 and the permanent red pc 122 and the poppy red pc 922 I would also like to color this squid and um, there I have also a picture of a squid here this is not uh, the front this is sort of the back end of the squid and I would like it to be because I found this picture and it's really whoops, beautiful of a um, squid that changes color uh, depending on the light source and all that but the problem is that um, it has some of the colors I have already used for these um, giant clams. So if I turn to some of these colors, I think that um, it would kind of ruin. Uh, it would be difficult to separate this one from the clams. So I've decided to go with another coloring scheme. So I would like to use the Nectar PC 1092 and the Peach PC 939 and also the light peach pc 927 for this squid so i will just start with this one and i will just color and this must be a bit of the front we can see here and this will be the back of these tentacles so the front i will color with the nectar And then I will turn to the peach and it's such a little drawing here so I won't be layering for 10 minutes I will just color it peach And you can already see that this uh, color separates it from the big vase uh, in the background and but it's it doesn't make this squid anonymous there is enough color on this squid so that you can see it it, it doesn't get lost in all of this coral reef all of the other colors and i will use the light peach to color these
yeah and that was the squid so we can clearly see that we have a squid here but it's not dominant in the picture but now i would really like some color to this drawing and that is why i have chosen uh, these orange and red colors for the fish so I am not quite sure if I want to originally I had an idea that all of these fish up here would be one color and also these down here but then my husband said to me and he was of course right that there are some fish species who live at the top of a coral reef and some live at the bottom and if we have to follow that logic these would be in one color palette and these would be in another and uh, then there's my choice because I want um, I really want some colors to shine through here because we have some um, more muted colors here uh, we, we also have some bright colors but I really want the fish not to vanish but to stand out to pop and that means that I will I think that I will um have to both have the light orange and the red fishes um, among each other. I also have a color scheme for these big fish, but I will have to see the result of the coloring of the little fishes before I decide. I uh, do have this picture here of larger fish from a coral reef. Um, and one is yellow with a bit of orange and the other is uh, mostly orange with a hint of red. So um, dependent on how many of the smaller fishes I color red orange and yellow orange, I'll decide the color of the big fishes afterwards. So we will have to see. We will have to see. But um, if we color the red fishes first, who will remember from the picture that there was a an orange stripe along the body. I had also thought about choosing the neon orange because I have never used it and I thought that, whoa, this would be a nice element. And then I um, did some color samples, you can see here. And the neon orange is really, really, really bright and I thought that perhaps it was too much because we already have the sea anemones with this uh, neon yellow color so I wasn't too sure if I wanted to make it even more bright with other colors and we also have this um, almost neon pink uh, color here it was actually the neon pink I used so um you can choose, of course, if you want to use the neon orange. I think that I will just stick to the orange and color it here. And um, then I would like to add the poppy red below the orange. because it's, well, it's a sort of an orange red color. And I would like to have the permanent red on top of the fish. Oh, I can't remember with the fins. Um, what color should I give these? Dilemma, dilemma, dilemma. I think that I will actually bring one more color in and I will use the Scarlet Lake PC923 to color the fins on top of the head to add more red. So you see a very bright red fish and I will just color the eye here with a black. I don't know if I want to add a little bit of white to the eye. We will have to see. But this is an example of a reddish fish. So, uh, the orange-yellow fishes. Just have to... Um, oh my. I think that I would like... I actually think that with these, I would like this fin to be orange. 
and then I will take my yellowed orange and color the top of the fish here and a little bit under here the mouth and then I will take the Spanish orange it's more yellow than orange and color the rest and the tail here yeah I think it works quite nicely but of course uh, I will just um, do it the other way around with this one have the yellow orange here because as I said before in one of the other episodes when I colored these uh, corals you can use the same colors and just change the way you use the colors uh, on the thing that you're coloring so I want the Spanish orange to be on top and still with the orange here and of course an eye and also with the red fish you could switch the permanent red to the fins here and the scarlet red here and then still the orange stripe there and um, then did oh I really really want to try this uh, neon orange oh my I have to try it anyway you can see how bright it is if we color this one with the neon orange and then we take whoops we take the permanent red here on top of it and we take the poppy red below and then the scarlet red here so it will be a different color scheme and you can see here that it's really 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 bright but you can do it this way so now that I have tried it I think that I will just color the rest of the fishes and when I will use these colors but I will um, mix them so um, it's not just the same for all of the fishes yeah I will do that now and that, then I will show you the result and then we will decide what to do with these larger fishes all of these small fishes are now colored and I think that they add a beautiful spark of color to this coral reef so now we need to color these big fishes and I um, want to color them yellow I think that if we continue with the orange I think that there would perhaps be too much orange and red in this drawing so I want to um, color them yellow and I want to use these three yellows the dark color sunburst yellow PC 917 and canary yellow PC 916 as a middle color and as my lightest color the lemon yellow PC 915 I don't want to use the deco yellow uh, because I want these fishes to be really really yellow and not some sort of a pale yellow a pale yellow so I will show you how I will color this fish here and I will start with the le the um, lemon yellow and I use this to color its head um, and I want the body to be really yellow so I think that I will use the canary yellow for that but I also still want to use this uh, lemon yellow so I think that I will um, well that's a question if I want this to be dark well, I think that I will turn to the sunburst yellow and just lay the color here and also with the tail but you could also because now I color this in a certain 
way of color, but you can still use these three colors to vary how you color the other fish, like I did here. Some of these uh, red fishes have this neon orange uh, line and others just an orange. And some of the lighter uh, orange uh, fishes are color with the sunburst or orange uh, at the top and some at the bottom, as you can see here. And with the yellow orange at the bottom or at the top. So this one I would like to color and I just leave a little bit of white here at the edges. I think I want to sharpen this one just a bit. Because when you color in small spaces, you have to sharpen your pencil. It has to be more sharp than in larger spaces. But these one I just color completely, these tiniest scales on this fish. Because it's completely impossible to leave any white there. So now you can see uh, how it turns out. I think that I want it to be somewhat more yellow actually here. So I will just hint that I want to um, use a sunburst yellow here and also the canary yellow still here and I think that I want to add some canary yellow here. I don't want it to go too light. I actually think that I just want to cover it completely with the canary yellow. I think that the lemon yellow was too light and bright for how I want this fish to turn out. So if we just add another layer, well, I will have to sharpen this one too. And I think I, <clears throat> I want this to be more colored than perhaps this one. This one I will have the lemon yellow too because this background is very light, but over here it's darker. So if I just color this one um, with the lemon yellow, you can see the difference here. You can see that it's light. It doesn't just blend in with the background. You can clearly see the fish. Here it was uh, too pale. So when the background is light, use a darker color. And when the background is darker, use a lighter color. For example, here and here, I would also color this uh, front end of the fish with the canary yellow. But here I will probably use the lemon yellow and also here. I'm not so sure about this one. Or perhaps I will give this the uh, sunburst yellow and change the colors completely on this one. Well, you have seen now how I, uh, how I have done it. So um, you can just color the fish in, uh, and use these three color combinations in a way you like. I will just color the rest now and then I will show you the result. All of these yellow fishes are now colored and all that's left are the bubbles and the jewelry. So let me start down here and I think that this is a gold coin and a gold medallion. So I will be using the yellow ochre PC942 and the sand PC940 to color this. Color this. And I will begin with the yellow ochre. And I will place this dark color at the bottom. and the sand where it's lightest. 
you can see it's not quite gold colored. But we have to remember that this has been in the water for some time. So it's not as shiny as it could be. The same with this one. The yellow ochre first and the sand. You could use uh, some more yellow tones for this if you wanted to add a bit more yellow. You could uh, add a little bit of the sunburst yellow if you wanted it to have a more yellowish look. Or perhaps some canary yellow. But I think it's uh, okay now because this has been in the water for some time so it's not quite what it used to be. I will add now a little bit of this uh, Pencil Sparkle Pop Gold Glitter Gel Pen and I will just add a little bit here and in the middle and with this star and perhaps just around the edges. We have to have a little shine here. We have two necklaces and they are made out of pearls. So what color are pearls? Well, if they are real pearls, they have some sort of a um, grayish, creamy color. Some have a pink tone, some have a light blue tone, but I want this diamond to be more of the light blue, so I don't want too much blue here. So I have chosen uh, the 10% warm gray PC 1050 and the cream PC 914. So I will color this lightly with the warm grey and I will add a little bit of cream And I will also add some white from a gel pen. So if we look at this one, again, the warm gray 10%, very light layer. And some cream. And I'm adding the cream where I don't want the white pasca to be, so they don't uh, mix. And then I will take a white. Oh, that was not a white. I have too many gel pens. A white gel pen. And then I will add the white here. where Hannah Carlson has um, marked where the highlights could be. And also over here. And I will use my pencil Sparkle Pop Silver to add as the rest of the necklace.
and also over here. And there you go. And last but not least, we have this diamond down here. And I um, don't want it to have too much color. So I am using this Sky Blue Light PC 1086 because it's the lightest and clearest of the blue. If we look at the color family chart, we can see the cloud blue uh, belongs to this more purple family. Uh, with the blue violet lake and the imperial violet and dioxathene uh, purple hue. And we can see that the powder blue is with the more grayish colors, blue slate, Caribbean sea, periwinkle and slate gray. But sky blue light uh, belongs in the same color family as a lot of the blue colors, electric blue, non-photo blue, true blue, cerulean blue, Copenhagen blue, denim blue and indigo blue. So that's the real light blue of these colors. And that's why I have chosen it. Chosen it. So I just want to color firmly some of these little spaces and others more lightly. And some you can hardly see I have colored. And I might just add um, a little bit of the next color, Electric Blue PC 1040. But not much. Just to add a uh, tad of color. But not too much. And then I will use my white gel pen to cover the black lines on this one. And I might have to do that a couple of times so that all of the black is covered. And now I will have to wait until it dries. Perhaps add a bit more color here and there and more of the white gel pen. And now you can see that I have cheated somewhat. First of all, I have marked the uh, edges around the pearls here with the white gel pen. I thought that the black outlining was too dark, uh, but you can decide if you want to do that. So that's one thing I have done. I have added more white to the diamond and some sparkle uh, here. And then I have uh, noticed perhaps that I had colored the eyes of the fishes and also the big fishes now with black, just black. And then I have added a little dot of white from a white gel pen. And I have also colored the bubbles on this page. So we just need to, I will show you how to color the bubbles on this page. Some of the bubbles are just pure white. But I alternate between the non-photo blue PC919 and the electric blue PC1040. And I just take my pencil and color and leave some room for white around this highlight. Some of them, the little ones, are just color completely at random where I want to with this non-photo blue. And over here. Then I take my electric blue and I do the same.
and then I take my white gel pen and just curl up this little white highlight in the big bubbles here. And that's it. That's how you color the bubbles. So the coloring is completely finished. And as you can see here, without artificial light and with it, it's done. And it's just as I wanted my coral reef to be, uh, with lots of different beautiful colors, some of them muted, some of them really bright and uh, popping off the page. The sea anemones with their fluorescent light, the giant clams here adding uh, more bluish tones, these pink and red corals, the lilac corals, this little nice porcelain crab, the squid hiding uh, in front of the vase and behind the clams and the other corals, these beautiful uh, bright fishes swimming around and a little left over from Atlantis with the great vases and the jewelry, the coin, the necklaces and the diamond. Uh, a little bit of more sea life, we also have some snails. Well, I think that uh, I'm, uh, I'm really satisfied with how this turned out to be. I hadn't planned all of this, I just planned as I went along. I just want to show you that my inspiration for the bubbles are from these pictures uh, that I found online. And um, that's why I chose the non-photo blue and the electric blue for the bubbles. I'm also quite pleased with the fact that I chose different colors of yellow with the big fishes. I think that if I had colored them more orange, uh, the picture would have been a bit darker in it. I think that they are a, a bright addition to the coral reef. And coral reefs are filled with beautiful um corals in many many different colors and fishes also in many many different colors so i think that i um actually managed to make a coral reef that reminds you of um one in real life or what they were supposed to be in real life because a lot of the coral reefs are not um in a good state right now because of pollution and climate change and so on well we're not going to talk about that. I just want to thank you very much for following me on this beginner tutorial with the Prismacolors. Next time I make a beginner tutorial, I will make it with the Castle Art Pencils a soft touch that I recently reviewed on my channel. I know that a lot of people use Castle Art and um, I want to make a beginner tutorial to help those people who have these Castle Art and don't have Prismacolors or Polychromas or whatever. Uh, I use. So upcoming, a new beginner tutorial with the Castle Art pencils. Also upcoming, a review of the Castle Art metallic and pastel tint pencils on my channel. And of course, you can also follow my how to color series where I dive into one uh, thing and show you how to color it. I recently colored snow and a winter night sky. So um, what's up next? Well, you will see that in the next video. I hope that you had fun and I hope that you will consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so already so that you can follow these videos in your own coloring journey. I would be happy to help you. You can also write a comment to me uh, asking me to show you how to color something and I will be sure to show you. That's it for today. Have a lovely day, a lovely weekend. Happy coloring. Bye.